Whipping all this dope up in the trap house We fuck all you bitches at the trap house I can't trust you, all, can't give you real address I can't trust you, all, can't give you real address They don't mean that be like Jerry Stagger I might fall in love with my trap house Stay savage, stay savage, your boy Shino Ventura What's poppin' today? We are back And guess what? We are back with another Boruto video Today, honestly, we got episode 81 what did you expect? I did talk about spoilers already, so if you watched the video, you knew what to expect. And to be honest, if you guys have been paying any attention to Naruto for the last 15 years or Boruto for the last, you know, couple of years that has been out, there's always that one or two episodes where they do a lot of dialogue. It's a lot of talking. We don't see no action. Just a lot of conversation. Mind you, we usually have an idea because we like to dig into the spoilers. I'm one person that don't necessarily mind being spoiled. You know, as long as it's not like complete context. As long as it's just like the scratch to the surface type of spoiling. You know what I mean? I don't really mind that because there are still surprises that take place. Now, I'll sometimes get into the spoilers and sometimes I stay away from them just in case I want to be surprised. But overall... I already knew how this episode was going to play out due to the spoilers, but mind you, like I said, there is always an episode in Boruto or Naruto. You know, if you watch Naruto over the last 15 years, you knew there was always that one or two episodes where it was just dialogue. You know, there was just some dialogue, even when it was not like filler. Like, obviously, Naruto has a lot of filler, but when it was canon, you know, there was always that episode where it was just constant talking and you was like, yo, what an action at. But mind you, the talking always came, episode, came after the episode with the action. So, like, in this, we had Kokyo and Seike, you know, obviously fighting against Borto, Sarada, uh, Shikadai, Inojin, and Chocho, you know, obviously they were squaring up, right? Mitsuki came through and he, like, attacked Borto. So, there was a lot of action in that episode. So, mind you, I expected that there was going to be a cooldown, not to mention Borto was still kind of passed out. So, this is everything I expected. Like, if you expected anything more from this episode right away i don't really know what to tell you because you mind you they still have to cover ground they still have to try to catch up to mitsuki and kokuyo because at this point i would assume that they got a lot farther away due to the fact that you know they are already a far ahead enough on the village trail and not to mention like boruto and them were passed out and they were waiting on boruto to recover like it's one of those things where you just gotta honestly understand what is taking place in the series and you just gotta pay attention to the dynamic of it right now regarding the whole episode i'm gonna keep it a buck uh as for what took place it was kind of bored so you know just sleep obviously we knew about like the dream that he was supposed to take care take place because we talked about it in the spoilers so Boruto basically had this dream in his subconscious world now my only issue with that was you know we got a lot of kind of flashbacks that they took from like events that happened earlier in the arc or like moments that happened earlier in the series with Mitsuki and I was just like yo at least like make it all original you know what I mean make it something completely unique and then it was one of those things where Borto was in the dream and he couldn't remember he just said he felt like he woke up from a bad dream but he couldn't remember right so it was like he didn't even get the deja vu moment like I felt like this happened before because you know he said he woke up from a bad dream right but at the same time he's in his dream and Mitsuki basically has the same events that took place like last time and earlier in the arc he was late to arriving you know with the squad you know what i'm saying then he even got the mission done her on time you know then they met up with shikadai and chocho you know so it was like okay uh boruto you could have at least been like yo i feel like i've done this before or something like that or even then like they could have just completely gave it something unique made it seem like you know mitsuki never really left the village or even made it look like mitsuki came back from the village you know make it like a little bit different my whole issue was that it was always like a lot of uh, copy and paste and that's what we've been seeing a lot throughout this Boruto anime I'll see them like go into a flashback and they'll just take something directly from what happened and then they just rerun it for like a good four minutes or three minutes you know what i'm saying now obviously that in this episode wasn't that long so i can't really nitpick at that but overall you know mind you once uh it got into the part where you know boruto started feeling the pain in his chest regarding his feelings and he had to learn about his actual feelings and learning to accept those feelings uh, you know, obviously people started to disappear and it was just him and Mitsuki. Then Garaga reappeared and Garaga was basically trying to put Boruto on a straight and an arrow in his own way. Now, mind you, you guys are probably like, what do you mean? Um, like if you guys look at this episode, you see Garaga basically telling Boruto, Boruto, it's time to cough up to your promise. Hey, you said if, you know, you didn't get Mitsuki back, I can kill you. So now you're going to become my prey. And what we see here is Boruto is in his subconscious world that's connected to Garaga. Because mind you, whenever you go into a contract, 
know you actually get be able to, to go into the subconscious world and you know basically talk to your summoning snake or even the same thing we've seen naruto do with his nine tails or even with b with the eight tails and their all the other gen characters right so you know obviously boruto isn't really aware of what's going on because he doesn't realize he got knocked out because i think let's keep it a buck mitsuki fucking zapped his ass back into the past you know and that's why we got that flashback that's why i basically played those events that we saw early on in the uh arc you know what i'm saying it wasn't like you know something he could have prevented this shit was just od because you know my boy mitsuki came out there and just zapped zap that nigga so hard that he didn't believe what took place he was he was just in denial he was like yo what actually just happened i do not understand what just happened to me like what the hell what like what just actually went down like you know what i'm saying so obviously that pain in boruto's chest wasn't just from the hurt of his friend betraying him but it was the hurt from that goddamn lightning snake jutsu just slapping the shit out of him but like i said garga in his own way you know was basically trying to lead boruto back to the right path then we see the mitsuki from his dream kind of giving uh boruto some type of like guidance or something like that you know he was like yo we need to run we need to like get away from this and like shit like that so it was making it seem as if like that mitsuki was there to help him but then boruto realized you know hey mitsuki is actually gone mitsuki is no longer around like who are you why are you like pretending to be mitsuki and like what actually happened to mitsuki right so in that moment you know, Boruto transfers over from the hidden uh, leaf village and goes back into the subconscious world with Garga. Garga kind of gives him that overall synopsis about like friends and how he basically didn't believe his friends would betray him or he didn't understand it until he lost his eye. And that's what made him live with the proof that people will betray you, that friends will turn their back on you and shit like that. Because that's just something that they, you know, typically do. And that's something like, you know, he has experienced. Because mind you, if you always experience something, if somebody's always backstabbing you and somebody's always messing over you or they always out to get you and stuff like that, eventually you're going to become one of those people who is always guarded. And that's the lesson that, you know, I think Garaga was explaining to board so that he is eventually going to always be guarded because, you know, he's going to constantly think that somebody's going to betray him. But mind you, Boruto is Naruto's son. Naruto doesn't really care if somebody betrays him. He's a very forgiving person. And we see the same traits in Boruto. And then, mind you, like I say, you know, Mitsuki does his, have his own objectives. And I think once Boruto pursues him a little further, those objectives will become revealed. And then, you know, Boruto is going to get an idea of why Mitsuki did the actions he did or why he went on the path that he took. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be one of those things where it's just going to be like, oh, I, I just left the village because of, I wanted to you know mitsuki is a main cast member you know they had their all intention for mitsuki to still be there and then apparently like the manga and the anime is supposed to cross paths at some point or another you know what i'm saying so it seems like the things that happen in the manga are at a further pacing than you know the the stuff that's in the anime you know and they said eventually they will adapt what's in the anime into the manga uh shout out to matthew for putting me on game about that and i went and actually looked it up and saw the article so it's like at this point in time you know this seems like the past and what happened in the manga is a little bit ahead of what's happening in the anime so you know mitsuki is still there so it's like it's a given mitsuki is going to be back mitsuki is not going to be gone you know what i mean and then when we got like the stuff that's going on with shikadai shikadai is trying to see if like he really wants to go through because he feels like he's already went this far he wants to know what's going on with the akuda mind you he has this like inquisitive mind just like shikamaru when something that's a problem that like presents itself to him they can't step down from it regardless of how much they don't want to get involved whenever there's a problem that's usually in front of those two they seem to want to like engage with it and that's something that we've seen him pick up from his father you know so now that he sees the problem with the akuda he sees the things that's going on with the uh, hidden stone and stuff like that or the hidden earth uh he basically wants to go in there and like figure out what the fuck is happening what is why is this taking place you know why are you guys acting like this what is the objective of this you know we need to find out the secrets because we've come this far and sorry to even present to him some real life questions our real life so uh scenarios is like yo you gotta mind you we're just getting should we just go back to the village and report to them what happened and then he presents to her he was like well if we do that we're still going to be punished for no reason and mind you we are already so close so we might as well go and find the secrets because if you look around us all the jonin around us are getting messed up and killed and you know sarada was just like yo if the jonin can't handle it what makes you think we can handle it when we're just getting you know what i'm saying so like 
they're all like thinking on some real like critical moments and they're doing very high levels of critical thinking and it's like Shikadai said we have already come so far we might as well not turn our back now and then we have Sarda who's being a realist he's like yo if the Jonin are dying what makes you think we can do it you know but that's when Shikadai is probably gonna have a strategy or a plan you know ready for it and then mind you on the other side of the spectrum while all this is taking place we have Enogen who has become friends with an Akuda like creature uh it seems like a smaller version of the Akuda and he's very playful but mind you i think it's more like he was reborn so it was like he like you know dissolved after he got cracked up because i i think it's really one of the ones that kokuyo was like you know punched in the face early on in this uh early on in the arc you know what i'm saying and like smashed it and it went into the ground because he came back with the cracked face so i feel like it might see kokuyo and really just get enraged and get pissed off and like try to attack him but it came back and as it came back you know it seems like it's a little kid or whatever and it's basically like clinging to enogen you know and enogen is basically like the parent to this thing you see enogen you know like teaching it and then like teaching it how to hunt and stuff like that and then telling them like the difference between attacking rabbits and you know actually like attacking enemies you know you don't kill for like purpose you know uh you you actually only kill to like defend yourself kind of shit you know you don't kill just because uh, like uh, with just malicious intent so Enogen jumps in front of him about to attack the fucking rabbit that rabbit was about to get fucked up dog but Enogen jumps in front of it and then like the baby Akuda you know it, it realized what it was doing was wrong and it felt bad because you know like like Mitsuki I mean not Mitsuki Enogen uh, basically took the blow both of these guys have really really pale skin so it's really really annoying when you talk about them because you start to think about each and every one of them individually but overall like I'm saying, you know, this is going to be another role that we're going to see used in in the series because now we're going to see uh, basically the Akuda used as some type of plot device, if I'm not mistaken. I feel like Mitsuki is going to see the Akuda with, you know, Boruto and them, and then Kokuyo and Seike may see the exact same thing and wonder why the Akuda took to Boruto's group and took to Inojin and stuff like that. And then Mitsuki is going to be like, oh, because that's the same reason why I took to him. Or, uh, you know, that's the original reason why I took to him. People just gravitate to Boruto and his friends because you know they are actually good friends and they're loving people and stuff like that so this may actually be used as a plot device later on in the series to getting Mitsuki to come back you know what I'm saying so I like what they added with that I like how they added the Akuda into like the group with Boruto and them because now they have something that they can use as a terms of getting closer to like Seike and them and making them understand because you know Seike is a very curious person so now he's gonna be like yo why is this Akuda with you you know Akuda's supposed to listen to us because we're their siblings and you know we were created from the same master what makes you so different uh, you know obviously Seike is going to be more intrigued mind you he was already intrigued with Boruto he already had a big interest in Boruto as well as Mitsuki so he's going to be wanting to understand these things a little bit more and it may put Seike on the side of switching from being with Lord Ku to the side of Boruto and Mitsuki now mind you that's speculation I don't necessarily know but overall this episode was exactly what I thought it was expectations weren't too high because mind you like I said there's always some big action then there's some downtime then goes back into the big action but like in the next coming episode we're gonna get some heat uh obviously you know we have like some spoilers that's been released and i know a little bit about what's about to take place but that's more so the titles and synopsis uh we don't know the details but overall just know things are about to get very like heated this is about to lead into the climax of this arc and we're about to finally get some like fire going down so let me know your personal thoughts and personal opinions in the comment section below on episode 81 if you guys enjoyed the video make sure you leave a thumbs up with that being said my name is Shino Ben Trill. stay true and stay real if you like the content subscribe and with that being said finally have a blessed day see you guys later Boise.